Well, let's just uh, pray as we uh, prepare our hearts uh, for the word today. And uh, we'll also commit the, the tithes under the Lord as well. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all those that are given, Lord, uh, today, Father, Lord, and uh, given online, Lord, and however they're given, Lord, in whatever form, Lord. We just pray, Lord, it just be blessing to you, Father. And, uh, Lord, that you bless those that are faithfully good stewards, Lord, of what you've given them. Lord, let your blessing be upon them, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. And, Father, as we come around your word this morning, we pray, Lord, that you just speak to each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, that you're in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in you. And, uh, Lord, we just want to honour you, Lord. So, Lord, just speak to each and every one of us, Lord, as we open your word this day, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, our theme for the year is thrive, as we know, and we've been talking about that in a key scripture, Proverbs eleven twenty nine: the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. And so that's a, a scripture that we've been talking about when we're talking about thriving. We're talking about not being a season because we know that there's seasons that come and go in life, some that are challenging, some we're just rejoicing. Uh, but we're talking about a lifestyle when we talk about that. And certainly not as the world says, uh, their idea of thriving is all the stuff that you have, but it's more about who you are and what you do. And we've said that a thriving life, which was one that is connected to God, that builds strong relationships, has an overflowing heart that uh, lives beyond the ordinary and accomplishes its purpose. And so that's what we've defined as a thriving life. And I want to talk today about strive or thrive. We can live a life that's thriving or we can live a life where we just are really striving. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. And uh, by striving, I mean the pressure to perform. Have you ever felt that? The pressure to perform or trying to meet the standard, trying to get approval of people or others. And it's amazing how many people in life get trapped in that where they're always striving, trying to make the grade, trying to be good enough, trying to earn approval, trying to meet the standard of other people's expectations in life and very easy for people to fall into that trap. And so I want to talk about that, that we don't, we don't have to live like that. We can strive or we can thrive. And I really want to talk about that today, being someone that is really caught up in that mindset. I praise the Lord for our Lord Jesus Christ. He certainly, you know, we know he was fully God, but fully man, but even in his humanity, he never fell for that trap. You know, today is... Uh, the uh, Sunday, Palm Sunday, when Jesus came, made the tri triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But by early Friday morning, we had the crowd there baying for his blood, crying out for him to be crucified. And so the approval of people is something that is very fickle. And uh, if you live your life wanting to be approval or accepted by other people, you're going to find that you're going to be living on fairly shaky ground because people can be very, very fickle. They'll cheer you on one day and the next day they'll be baying for your blood to have you crucified and certainly what Jesus had. And we've got to be very careful about trying to get acceptance from other people. My father tells a story where he actually went to a, a Catholic institution uh, under the, the brothers and uh, quite a difficult environment uh, for a child uh, for their education certainly back in those many 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 years ago and uh, there was a, a boy there who um, he had he had some learning difficulties and he, he really struggled and, and because of those learning difficulties he really had trouble fitting in and so he would do whatever he could trying to earn people's approval trying to make people accept him make people he just desperately wanted to belong and so he did whatever it took trying to make all these people accept him. But what they did is the other ones sort of took advantage of him and they would dare him to do things. And so he did a whole lot of silly things and they just thought it was hilarious. And he desperately thought if I did all those things that they dared me to do, that they would accept him. And then one day, this was in a multi-story building, um, he was there and so much wanted to be a part of the crowd, so much wanted to be accepted that there was a high window and the kids dared him to jump out the window. They go, come on, it's all right, you do it, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, you can join us, you'll be with us if you do that. And so this boy, so desperate for acceptance, he jumped out of the window and suffered horrific injuries as a result of that. I think it was a bit of a wake-up call to all those other boys, what they were doing to that poor boy. But so much, he just wanted to be accepted. 
And now that's an extreme example of someone that went to those lengths, but it's amazing how people can get caught up in their lives trying to earn the approval of other people, trying to meet their expectations, trying to be accepted by people, trying to be approved by people. And it's a very subtle thing and we can fall into that. And uh, if we do fall into that trap, we're going to be one that is striving and struggling in life and we won't be one that is thriving. And one of the biggest bondages is the people that are worried about what other people think of them being worried about what people think about, or what they're going to say about me. What are they thinking about me? And I had that conversation with them, oh, and then people analyze, oh, did I say the right thing? Or what did they say? Or people can get up into all sorts of traps of being worried about what people think of them. And, and even as believers, people can fall for that trap and people do fall for that trap of being worried about, will, will people accept me? Will, will they like me? Uh, uh, am I going to be approved of them? What do they think about me? And Proverbs 29, 25 says, it says, fear of man will prove to be a snare. And being worried about what people think about you is such a, a bondage and such a trap. And it's, it's such a horrific trap that we see our young people in these days. With uh, They have a massive problem with, with bulimia and a whole lot of things with image, body image problems that are amongst young people because of all of the things that are out there. They see all this stuff on Facebook and they'll Photoshop and they'll have their TikTok and they're trying to do whatever it is to make people like them and accept them and get approval. And it's such a, a gripping thing. It can be a snare. And you might think, well, I'm not like that. But it can be, it can very be very subtle that you actually are worried, well, what are people saying about me? What do they think about me? And it's such a snare for people. People can become crippled in that and they're trying with all their heart to, to, to do better. I want to be accepted. I want to be approved. And it's such a snare. Some people fall for the trap of being a people pleaser and trying to make everybody like them. That whatever it takes, they'll do, yep, I may, if you've, I'll try to please you. If I do this for you, if that pleases you. Maybe you'll like me and trying to be a people pleaser. But for anyone, if you've gone down that road, you know that's a, a no-win scenario. You can't win on trying to be a people pleaser because you can't please everyone all the time. And you'll find a lot of things in life, and, and certainly as Christians, are not whether it's just right or wrong, whether it's moral or uh, immoral, or whether it's ethical or unethical, whether it's godly or ungodly, most of the things that we face in, as believers are trusting that we are walking the straight and narrow road and walking according to God's word. A lot of the stuff that we have to deal with is more about people's preferences. And if you get someone who tries to please someone, well, I guarantee that someone else's preference is going to be different from you. If I said, look, you know, we're going to um, paint this pulpit blue. Now, we're not going to, but some of you might prefer that. And someone said, no, 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 I think it should be green. I, I think it should be red. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to have the you know, French flag on it. It's going to be red, white, and blue or whatever. You, what are you going to do? You can't please people, but people fall into the trap of trying to please people. And it is such a snare. And even as believers, it's very subtle. We can fall into that mentality and you get caught up into trying to be good enough, trying to meet the standard, meet people's expectations of us. And it's a crippling thing It can really bind people up. Apostle Paul, he's one who also came to, we know Jesus was not pleasing uh, men, he was one that was pleasing God. And the Apostle Paul also came to that same place. In Galatians 1.10, it says this, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And certainly he wasn't popular. We know he wasn't certainly popular with the Jews particularly. Uh, and the, the persecution and things that Paul went through, he went through a whole lot of stuff uh, from people that were against him and opposed to him. He said, if I was trying to be, be a pleaser, I wouldn't be make this stand. And some of you in your own family situations, some of your own circumstances where if you really wanted to please everybody, if you probably weren't a believer, you'd probably get along with unbelievers in the family probably a lot better because you're not a threat to them. They're not challenged by your lifestyle. They're not confronted by the holiness and the grace of God. And if you were just like them in your workplace as well. If, uh, if you just were like everybody else, there's no challenge for them. Not that you go around condemning them, but if they see the grace and the humility and the life and Christ shining out of you, they're challenged by that. But if you were just like them, then there's no threat to them, no challenge to them or their lifestyle. But Paul did have learned the secret of, of 
being one who was not trying to please people, not someone who was caught up into that bondage. And have a look in your own heart and maybe just see whether that's come into your life. And but maybe even in your family situation, if there's been estrangement within your family, the problem or temptation there is, is that you're going to do whatever it takes to try to, to bend over, to try to um, make it, smooth it over, to do whatever. And maybe just compromise just a little on who you are and whatever. But we don't want to do that. We want to stand righteously and, and hold him in the things of God. And so we want to move from striving to thriving. We want to be people that are thriving and not caught up with trying to make other people like us, make other people approve of us, accept us, love us. We don't want to be caught up in that. Now, I'm not talking about the flip side of going around just being obnoxious to everybody because I don't care what anyone thinks. Well, that's not Christ-like. We want the love of God and the love of Christ to shine out of our hearts. And so we don't want to be obnoxious kind of people. But we want to be ones that are, who are able to thrive in life. And probably the most important thing for every one of us as we look at these things is to, to know and to remember. Pastor Lewis talked about remembering and, and then the, we heard the word about wonder. That to remember that he is our loving heavenly father. We have a loving heavenly father a one who loves us and accepts us. Now, some of you may not have had perfect relationships with your own human father. And maybe for some, whatever you did was never good enough. You could never raise to the standard of, of, of attaining to what your human father wanted. A lot of people that become performance driven, who just always working so hard, trying to, to be a perfectionist, trying to do everything perfect to right. Some of those things can be linked with just trying to be loved and accepted by their father, but we can broaden that and we can fall into that for others. But to remember, we have a loving father in heaven. And, and, and that's such an important thing. That's always a thing that we always go to. Remember, because of what Christ did on the cross, that we have that relationship with our father in heaven. And so we, we don't live for the approval of men. You're not trying to make people happy. You're not trying to bless people in terms of so they would accept you. You bless them because the love of Christ flows out of your life. But you're never trying to get stuff out of people with, it, with its approval, acceptance, their love, appreciation or whatever. We just, we don't live for that. We don't live for the approval of men. Romans 8.15, it says this. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. So the Easter rapidly approaching. Easter, we know what the story of Easter, we know about Christ going to the cross and dying in our place for our sins. And in doing so, he dealt with the sin and made us acceptable to our Father in heaven. And so we don't actually have to earn God's approval. Some people might say, well, hang on, if it was hard enough trying to live to the standard of getting approved by people and by my own family and those that I know, how much harder it must be to get to the standard of being approved of God. Surely that's a, a far greater standard and a greater burden and a greater stress, a greater struggle, a greater striving to please him than if it's hard enough as it is with, with people in our lives. But the, the, this is something that we always got to remember, and always understand that, that God loves us so much. And that, that he gave everything for us. And so, and, and he, he, he knows everything about every one of us. There's nothing hidden. There's no secret. There's no little stone that isn't unturned. There's nothing that you say that he does not hear. There's nothing that you think that he's not aware of. Nothing that you do that he doesn't know. He knows us completely. But the one who knows us completely is the one who loves us completely. He loves us totally. He, he's, he loves us. And we are ones that are proved of God. See, religion would say, yeah, this is a great standard, a high standard, and you're going to have to strive and bust your guts for the rest of your life, trying to be good enough and hoping that at the end of the day, you've done enough for God's approval. That's what religion is. And that's what legalism is as well. There's some laws, and if you do that, you do this, and you're accepted. If you don't, you're not. 
And as Christians, we can fall into the subtleties of that and think, no, no, I'm born again. I'm free in Jesus' name. But you can fall under that, still somehow thinking, no, look, I'm really not really that worthy. People really knew me. Oh, I'm I'm not really worthy. Uh, I'm, I'm not perfect. And therefore, I'm not worthy of God. It's because of the cross of Christ that makes us worthy. None of us, none of us are perfect in ourselves. It's because of Jesus Christ. Him alone makes us worthy. It's his holiness, his righteousness that is given, that is imputed to us. And so knowing that we're in God actually doesn't give us a greater pressure. In fact, it's a massive relief. You don't have to please anyone. There's only one person that you have to please, and that is our Father in heaven. And you are already are ones that are pleasing him. If you've given your life to Christ, then he says, well done, uh, my child. He, see, he loves you. He's pleased with you. There's nothing more better that you can do to please the Lord than to give your life to him. And if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you stand as 100% approved. 100% approved. There's nothing more that we can strive or struggle to do to make God love us or to accept us anymore. It's all been done in Jesus Christ. And if we remember that I'm a child of God, I don't have to earn your approval. I don't have to try to please you to make you love me and accept it because I'm in completely loved and I am completely accepted by my Father in heaven. And if that's the platform of our life, to know that we are fully accepted and fully loved, and, and then, then that's the foundation for every relationship, whether it's in your marriage whether it's in your friendships, whether it's in your family, if you stand on that platform of I am one that is fully approved of God, then that will overflow into your relationships. But if you're one who doesn't know that or doesn't remember that, you're going to struggle in your marriage. You're going to struggle in your relationships. You'll struggle in your friendships. You'll struggle in that because then that subtle mentality of trying to please them, make them love me. But if you're standing on the platform of love and acceptance, then you don't need to strive. You're confident in who you are. You feel at peace with who you are. You're not perfect, but Christ declares that you are perfect. And as you stand on that foundation, then you're able to grow and build in relationship with other people. And that insecurity that people feel, you won't feel that insecurity. Oh, I hope they like me. I hope they did. You won't fall into those traps that so many people fall into so very easily and so subtly to fall in that, that we're a child of God. We are totally approved of him. And and if God approves of you, then that gives you such a confidence in life, in your relationships, in friendships, in your marriage, in every relationship that you have, knowing that you are approved of God. And out of that platform of that, then you're able to show love and grace and forgiveness and all of those things that, that, that we're asked to show and, and God enables us and empowers us to do. So you just have to please the one who is already pleased and have the approval of one who already has put a seal on you, puts a stamp on your head and says, this child is approved. You have my approval. Quality control has gone and put the little stamp on you. You find that if you get some things from China, if you see those things, they have the little stickers somewhere like QC past and whatever. Well, you've got a stamp, the seal of the Holy Spirit that says you have approved, you are sealed, you have passed, you've passed inspection. And so therefore you can be one that is secure in who you are as a child of God who was made in the image of God and is loved of God completely. We don't have to strive. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone to make people love you or to accept you. You are accepted. And if you stand on that platform, as I've said, then that will overflow into all the relationships of your lives. And so it's so important to that because look, we, we were very humbled Muriel and myself and our family a couple of weeks ago when we had that celebration and, and your love and your grace that you poured upon us. Uh, we just, just were so loved and accepted and, and so grateful. But at the end of the day, we don't find our identity in those things because if we did, then we're going to be wanting that and expecting that and wanting people to th- say thank you and bless you. You can get caught up in that. Some people get discouraged when they're not thanked and if they're not blessed, and if they've worked hard, and, and that person was honoured, I wasn't honoured, they got blessed, and I didn't get blessed, and if they feel that way, that comes down to this very thing. 
there's some insecurity, there's something that's not quite there on the foundation that if, you, if someone's blessed and if you feel, well, no one's thanking me, no one's acknowledging me, no one's honouring me, then there's something with this that you need to grab a hold of because there's something in there that you're looking for the pleasing and the approval of other people. And people are wonderful, and but people are people, yeah? And all the people said, Amen. yeah, there's a few of us here. We're all people. And we have good days and we have bad days and, and uh, we can be blind. Someone, someone might be there and, you know, you're, you're dying. The person saved your life and then you've, you know, oh, thank you, God, I'm alive. person saved your life and you forgot to thank the person who just saved your life. We can do that. We, we, we can do that because none of us are perfect. But if we were relying on other people's thank yous, other people's well done, other people's acceptance and approval, that we're going to struggle in life. You're going to be striving because you, that, that tank of acceptance and love and approval won't be filled. And I tell you, people will never feel that. Even your spouse can't feel that. You can't do that. You can't feel that in your spouse as well or in your family or your friends. Only God can fill that tank. And once that tank's full, then you can love each other. You can express the, the love and grace of God. But it's so important to remember that we have a loving Father and you're a child of God and you are approved and that affects everything that you do, every relationship that you have and to stand on that secure platform. I don't need people to love me. I don't need people to like me. I don't go out of my way to be obnoxious, but I, I, I just want to stand on the platform and out of that platform, let the love of God flow. Let the peace of God, let the grace of God flow as we stand as people that are approved of God. What a wonderful thing that is. What a wonderful freedom that is. You don't have to worry about, oh, what, what, what do they think about me? Oh, what, what, are, what are they saying about me? Did I say the right thing? Did I do the right thing? What a, what, what a trap that is. Or no one appreciates me. I was here at six o'clock in the morning the, garage sale and we thank Pastor Lewis and Sue and I was here and no one said anything to me. Well, I wasn't there by the way at six o'clock and didn't get there at 11 o'clock. But anyway, I was there a few hours anyway. Um, but but some, if you think that, then there's, there's something that's not quite right there because the scripture says when one is honoured, we're all honoured. When one is blessed, we're all blessed. And so if we grab a hold of these things. So remember the one who loves you the most is our Father in heaven. He knows everything about you, but he says approved in Jesus Christ. You don't have to be clamoring for the uh, filling of everybody else. You're full in Christ. He is our all and in all. He fills us in every way. So really, there, there are two ways in that we can live. We can live a thriving life or we can live a striving life. And so that really we, we choose what to, how we're going to live that life. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, it says this. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them, be separate, says the Lord. And touch no unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What a wonderful wonderful promise and so there's a separation from the world and that and by the way this is not saying oh, okay I'm not going to talk to anyone you go to work and you know they're not believers so I don't talk to unbelievers off you go um, you won't be in your job very long if you do that in fact your witness will not be very powerful if you start becoming a snob and saying oh sorry you inferiors and that's not the love of Christ. In fact, Paul admonishes and says in 1 Corinthians 5, it won't come up, but he says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not meaning all the people of this world are immoral, all the greedy and the swindlers or the idolatries. If that was the case, you'd have to leave the world. It's true, isn't it? It's a sinful world and you live in that. And so by coming out and being separate from them is not saying, sorry, I don't talk to you anymore at work because you're unclean. It's not, doesn't, doesn't go that. It means that Paul was writing actually about if there's brothers and sisters who are claiming to do that and don't want to live a godly life, then 
don't associate with them. He said, don't even eat with them if they're claiming to be godly and their life is everything but that. But the point of what we're talking about here is, it says, do not be yoked with unbelievers. Don't be yoked with the world's mindset. Don't be yoked with the world's way of doing things. And the world will quickly, is, when you're not even looking, you want to slip this little yoke of bondage on you. It'll put that little thing about craving acceptance and people thinking you're good enough and you, you got what it takes and you've met the standard and, and you're there. And the world will try to slip that little yoke on us very quickly. And so we say, no, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to fall into this trap of striving and struggling and wanting everyone to love me and to like me because I desperately want that. You don't need that. If you're loved of God, you're approved of God. Yet you don't want everyone hating you. But the scripture actually says, rejoice when people hate you. So don't go around making them hate you so you can be happy. I'm not telling you to do that. But there won't be people who aren't going to be happy with you. Not everyone likes Christians. Did you understand that? Yeah, and if you've ever been to work, you'll realise that, yeah. In your neighbourhood, not everybody likes Christians, but we're not trying to approve, we the approval of people. We want people to know that they can be approved of Christ. But we don't want to be yoked like the world. We don't want the world's life and its standard and all of those things to get upon us. We're trying to get ahead, trying to be loved, trying to get people to like you, to elevate you, and trying to uh, get you up into some sort of a position so we, don't, we can choose the world's way, but if we've made Christ our Lord and Saviour, then we've actually made another choice. And, and maybe if somebody's watching this or if somebody is here, you still feel under that yoke or you haven't actually come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus gives this beautiful, beautiful invitation. And uh, if Easter is about anything, it's about Jesus inviting people to come into relationship with him, demonstrating his love for us on the cross by the ultimate sacrifice, but also demonstrating his divinity by rising again from the dead. But Matthew eleven twenty eight, it's a beautiful, beautiful scripture. So there's the yoke of the world, but Jesus actually talks about a different yoke. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I tell you what, trying to please people, trying to make the grade, trying to be good enough, trying to be accepted, trying to have approval from people, I tell you what, that will weary you out, that will tie you out, that will bring you down. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Wow. Coming to the Lord. If you're weary and burdened, I'll tell you what, living a life of trying to get people to approve of you or like you or accept you or to fill your emotional tank is wearisome and burdensome. But if we come to Jesus, there's that promise that he has here. He says, I will give you rest. And the rest that he says is it's rest for your soul. Man, I mean, there's plenty of people from yesterday who worked so hard at the garage, garage sale who would have went home and had a bit of a rest, yeah? I was there making some interesting noises myself uh, on the couch, snoring away. At, um, and you can feel refreshed after you have that. But there's, there's, there is a type of rest that is far better than any physical rest that you'll ever get. And that's the rest of the soul. You will find rest for your souls. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and then, then can I encourage you to come into know him, know him as your Lord and Saviour, and you will find rest for your soul. But if you're also one that's allowed the world trying to slip its little yoke on and you've been desperate for people to approve you, like you, accept you, love you, need you, then say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to Jesus, Lord. Let, let your, only your yoke be upon me. Lord, I want to learn from you, Lord. You're gentle with me. He's not going to come judging and beat you up. He's going to accept you, pour his love and grace upon you. And it gives rest for your souls, the deepest part of us, to be at a place of rest. And really, it's only when you're at that place, that deep place of rest, that soul rest at the fundamental level, and then our striving begins to cease. And then we really begin to thrive. You strive or thrive. It's so hard trying to thrive if you're striving all the time and struggling 
all the time trying to get acceptance and all of those things. But there is a rest for our soul. The ultimate rest is that soul rest. So let's stand to our feet. I want to pray for us. If anyone is here that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're watching, you don't know Jesus Christ, I pray that you will find the meaning of Easter and that you will find that rest for your soul. <coughs> and for all of those who know Christ, <coughs> Maybe you've allowed the, uh, that yoke of the world just to slip on there a little bit and you're caught up because you so much want acceptance. You so much want approval. So much want this thing to be restored and so much that you're striving in it and actually being counterproductive in that process. So let's just pray. Father, we just uh, thank you so much, Lord, that, that, you, that we are children of the living God. We thank you because of the cross of Jesus Christ, Lord, that Lord, that you wiped away all our sin, Lord, all our weakness, our shame, Lord, our failure, Lord, all of the sense of not being good enough, Lord, being unworthy. Lord, by the cross, you took that away, Lord, and Lord, that you declared us to be loved, Lord, to be approved, Lord, to be worthy. And so, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for that, Lord, that we are children of the living God, that there is no wall of hostility, that, Lord, that we are able to come into that deep relationship with our Father in heaven. Father, <coughs> Lord, I pray, Lord, that if anyone doesn't know you, Lord, they'll come to know you this day. And Lord, as anyone who's struggling with these things, Lord, that they will surrender to you and take your yoke alone, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. If you need